Hello music fans, welcome to the Death by Unicorn channel. Today I'm talking about my 10 favorite metal rock and prog albums of 1987. Before the proper list, I'm going to give a few honorable mentions here. Honorable mention goes to Free as a Bird by Supertramp. Uh, another one for the Uplift Mofo Party Plan by the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Another honorable mention for the 598 EP Garage Days Re Revisited. It's a covers EP by Metallica. And last honorable mention I'll give to Hold Your Fire by Rush. Uh, oh, How the Mighty Have Fallen. Rush was usually getting my number one spot up until um, Signals was their last, was my last album of the year belonging to Rush. And after that, they fell off a little bit for me, even though I still like Grace Under Pressure. Then they fell off even more after Grace Under Pressure for me. Uh, so they've kind of fallen off here. They're still a good band, of course, but they've just passed their prime for me at this point. And number 10 is going to be The Family Man by Rick Wakeman. This is New Age. It's an instrumental keyboard album where this well-known Yes keyboardist made a song for each member of his family, including his parents, his pets, and even his computer. Which is a strange thing to do in 1987, but that's what he did. It's far from his best work. But there's nice variety on here from silly, fun sounding faster songs to beautiful slow songs with nice melodies. Number nine is Crest of a Knave by Jethro Tull. This is a hard rock album. It's got some progressive influences still, but it's not as progressive as their era before this. It's, this is their 16th album. It was recorded after a three year hiatus caused by a throat infection of vocalist Ian Anderson resulting in him changing his singing style. And I prefer his singing style from before this album, to be honest, but the vocals aren't too bad here on Crest of a Nave. This actually won the 1989 Grammy Award for Best Hard Rock and Metal Performance, this album, uh, for an upset over Metallica's And Justice For All. I think that's a bit of a, a mistake, because I think And Justice For All is a lot better than Crest of a Nave, in my opinion. But this is still a good album, just not at that very good level. Uh, the opening track on here is called Steel Monkey. It's based around a sequencer riff and uh, doesn't have any flute, which is kind of weird for Jethro Tull. And then my favorite track on the album is the 10 minute Budapest, which is proggy and has a similar sound to some of the earlier Jethro Tull albums. At number eight, I've got Islands by Mike Oldfield. This is a progressive pop rock album. It's his 11th album. Side one of this is an almost 22 minute prog epic. And side two features shorter, more accessible pop songs. The pop songs on side two sound a bit dated to me. They have some of that 80s cheesiness, but they're decent enough songs. But for me, I really uh, prefer listening to side one of Islands by Mike Oldfield. Number seven is Gaudi by the Alan Parsons Project. This is another progressive pop rock album with some new wave and symphonic influences. It's their 10th album. And it is their kind of their last album that they recorded. If you don't count uh, Freudiana from 1990, because that was actually released under Eric Wolfson's name, even though it was meant to be the 11th Alan Parsons Project album but Wolfson and Parsons had creative differences. Um, so it ended up being released under Eric Wolfson's name. And then there was one other Alan Parsons project album released after Gaudi called Sicilian Defense. It released in 2014 after the band had broken up, but all that stuff was recorded in 1979 before this Gaudi album. And now Gaudi is not the Alan Parsons Project's best work, but it's still good and it makes my list. That's uh, one of the big themes on this list is a lot of uh, my favorite bands have passed their prime, but they're still putting out stuff that I think is good and worth being on the list, uh, but not their best work. Number six is another one like that. It's The Eternal Idol by Black Sabbath. This is Heavy Metal. It's their 13th album. It's their first album to feature vocalist Tony Martin. 
He does a great job and sounds somewhat similar to Ronnie James Dio. There's nothing amazing on here, like on the first six Black Sabbath albums with Ozzy on vocals. But all the music is good. It's just not at that very good level like that early stuff. My favorite track on this album is the title track, Eternal Idol, because it's the doomiest. And I think Tony Iommi's riffing and songwriting is at its best when it's doomy. Some of the other tracks on here sound a bit too close to glam metal and hair metal and hard bluesy rock to me, and that's not what I want to hear most from Iommi. I like those evil sounding riffs of his the best. Number five is Killing Technology by Voivod. This is progressive thrash metal. It's their third album. And now this is actually the opposite of most of the albums on this list because most of the albums on this list are by aging bands late in their career who have passed their prime. And this, I think, is a band actually stepping up their game. This is their third album, and I think it's better than their first two albums. I think this is where they find their signature sound of mixing progressive rock into thrash metal. And it's very dissonant and quirky. It's like if King Crimson or Primus played thrash metal. It also has influences from hardcore punk and crossover thrash. Instead of side one and side two for the vinyl, they call them the killing side and the ravenous side. I thought that was kind of neat. Number four in 1987 is A Momentary Lapse of Reason by Pink Floyd. This is progressive rock, but it's kind of more on the softer radio rock side of that it's their 13th album it's their first album without roger waters i like it better than the final cut which came before but it's still far from the best work by pink floyd which is all behind them at this point number three is clutching at straws by marillion this is a neo prog rock band their fourth album and their last album with their original vocalist fish it's a solid concept album with both catchy and progressive moments. If you're a fan of Genesis and Rush, I think you'll like this. Number two is The House of Blue Light by Deep Purple. This is a hard rock album. It's their 12th album. It was the second recording by the reformed Mark II lineup and the sixth studio album overall by this formation of the band. And it's always great to hear Ian Gillen on vocals and Richie Blackmore on guitar. And of course, John Lord on keys, Roger Glover on bass, and Ian Pace on drums. When you get those five together, some magic happens. This is generally known as the best lineup of Deep Purple, and I have to agree. So check out The House of the Blue Light, The House of Blue Light by Deep Purple. And then number one is Big Generator by Yes. This is a pop rock album. They've really changed their sound from their earlier prog sound, but they do keep hints of that and they have some complexity to their songwriting this is their 12th album features trevor rabin on guitar rather than their more iconic guitarist from the 70s steve howe but trevor rabin is also an amazing guitarist i think in today's age right now he probably plays a lot better than uh steve howe um in 2023 Anyways, his album Rio, I thought he played amazingly on there, uh, even better than Steve Howe sounds on Mirror to the Sky. Um, but back in this time, Steve Howe was great. They were both pretty pretty evenly matched. Uh, but Trevor Rabin does more of a pop-style songwriting, uh, so it features the big hits Love Will Find a Way and Rhythm of Love, as well as other tracks like Big Generator and Shoot High, Aim Low. And while it's no longer progressive rock, it is very sophisticated pop with interesting arrangements, great performances from all members. I love the guitar riffs. I love the guitar leads. Uh, I think it's still an excellent album by Yes. Definitely not their best, but I think people um, overlook them. A lot of the progressive rock fans of yes don't like their pop era and i think uh, it's pretty good so check out big generator by yes an excellent pop rock album and my favorite album of 1987 my next video in this series is of course going to be on 1988 uh, but before that i'll probably post my first impressions on 
albums that came out recently in early March 2024. I'll give my first impressions on Heimdall Deluxe Version by Enslaved, The Likes of Us by Big Big Train, Mountainhead by Everything Everything, Beach Day by Another Sky, Too Hot to Sleep by Daniel Romano's Outfit, The Mandrake Project by Bruce Stickinson, and Jesse Volume 4 by Jacob Collier. If you want to see that, hit subscribe so you're staying in the loop on when I'm releasing videos. And let me know down in the comments, what are your favorite albums of 1987? What do you think of my list? Do you like the albums on it? Are some of them, some of these albums annoying to you? What do you think of these albums? Let me know and stay tuned. Peace out.